Only one acts. person that uh, was arrested simply because he criticized President Marcos. None. Wala raw na kulong dahil sa kanilang paniniwalang politikal o dahil sa pagbatikos sa Rene Marcos no martial law. Fact or fake? Katotohanan o kasinungalingan? I sign proclamation number 1081, placing the entire Philippines under martial law. Yan ang sabi ng martial law architect at dating defense minister ni Marcos na si former Senator Juan Ponce Enrile. Maybe one person that uh, was arrested simply because he criticized President Marcos. None. Ako ay kinidnap sa Ilocos Sur at uh, ikinulong ng halos dalawang taon sa Camp Chego silang San Fernando City, La Union. Bonifacio Ilagan, inaresto ako noong April 24, 1974 dahil ako ay tagapangulo ng Kabataang Makabayan sa UP Diliman. Why was I arrested? I was arrested because they called me a subversive. Because uh, I was working for workers, uh, higher education for teachers. History records will show us not one, but at least 70,000 people were arrested no martial law. Bakit? Dahil nung panahon yun, sinuspinde ang pribilehyo ng writ of habeas corpus. Ibig sabihin, kahit sinong inakusahan ng rebelyon, pwedeng hulihin kahit walang warrant of arrest. Sa panahon din yun, hindi malaya ang media. During the time, during martial law, of course there was no freedom of speech. No one could, could oppose. The newspaper We Forum was, I think, the first above ground newspaper that published the things that were not found in the crony papers. The fake medals, the economic situation, mostly the Lawai, human rights abuses and the, the loans being uh, accessed by the government which really put the Philippines in a very bad economic situation. Yung asawa ko lang, nang naaresto siya when we were raided, when the newspaper was raided in 1980, sampu na sila lahat-lahat. And he says, walang kahit isang naaresto. E isang incident lang yon. Pero iba ang sabi ni JPE. That's why we had 70,000 oh, persons arrested, which was, not, which, which was not true. Maybe if they will include the, car, the people who, were, who violated curfew and the jaywalkers, maybe you can reach that number. <laughs> Nag-file kami ng case sa Hawaii. At uh, sa almost 10,000 ay puro political lang kaso. Hindi jaywalking. Maraming nahuling jaywalking, totoo yun. Pero higit na marami yung nahuli dahil kaiba yung political belief sa martial law. Ang sasabihin ko, yung mga inarestong yan, hindi yan mga jaywalkers ng panahon ng batas militar. Sapagkat may documents kami to show that hindi ito mga jaywalkers lamang. Ito, secret. Yung kanilang polluted intelligence against me. Tapos pagbabasahin mo, wala silang pinito kundi naglarali ako. You mean I am a subversive because I express my freedom of expression. Alam mo, yung term na aso ay bagay kay Enrile. Dahil ang aso, during the time of martial law, stood for arrest, search, and seizure order. Yan ang pirmado ni Enrile sa bahawat kaso ng panguhuli nila at panggugulpe. Ay hindi ko alam kung sa nakalimutan niya na yung napakahalagang dokumentong yan. Katunayan, sa dami ng mga inaresto, binuo ang grupong Task Force Detainees noong 1974 at may opisina pa sila hanggang ngayon. Dito makikita ang mga muka ng mga nakulong at dinakip mula sa mga makata, apogado, estudyante at mamahayag. They were inconvenient, inconvenience for a while but they were released. Again, kasi nungalingan yan. Ano? Kasi una akong na-detain, mahigit two months, hindi sandali yon. At yung pangalawang detention ko from 1979 to 1981 ay halos dalawang taon. Masasabi mo ba na na-inconvenient lang ako nung time na yun, ng ganun kahaba na pagkakakulong? 
That's not an inconvenience to be tortured, electrocuted, no? kukulienting ka, tapos sexual molestation, tapos grabe yung Russian roulette, no? kung hindi ka magsasalita, babariling ka, so, tapos sinakal ka ng belt, yung mga ganun yung mga pinaggagawa sa akin, maraming ginawa sa akin. No? Hindi yun inconvenience. Torture is never an inconvenience. So, at, at hindi lang ako yan. And I'm not the worst one either. Ayon sa Amnesty International, 34,000 ang na-torture ng martial law at ang ilan sa mga hinuli ng Philippine Constabulary ang tawag sa pulis nung panahon yun, hindi pa rin natatagpuan hanggang ngayon. They claim that we killed a lot of people. And that's why when I was interviewed by someone uh, some time ago, I challenged her. Name me one that we executed, what we killed other than Limsek. Eh, anong tawag niya doon sa kapatid ko at yung kanyang mga kasamahan na dinukot ng Ground Team 205, isang Special Intelligence Unit ng Southern Tagalog na pinamunuan ng isang koronel na napromote pa sa general. Ano? Anong tawag niya doon? Hanggang ngayon, di namin nakikita. Doon sa sampu, dalawa ang natagpo ang bangkay sa Tagaytay at ang isa'y nahukay namin sa isang common grave sa Laguna. Ano ang tawag niya kay Lilio sa Hilaw, ang unang babaeng namatay under military custody, sinunog ang lalamunan ng muriatic acid? You know, anong tawag niya kay Johnny Escandor na natagpo ang patay? Maraming documented na mga kaso. Para sa lahat ng mga naging biktima ng human rights violations noong panahon ng martial law at para sa mga tinatawag na desaparecidos o disappeared, itinayo ang bantayog ng mga bayani. These people at the, on the wall of bantayog ng mga bayani were nominees when bantayog was founded purposely to remember the victims of the authoritarian rule. And uh, they went through a tedious process of selection. Were they arrested? Some of them were arrested, but many of them disappeared and many of them were killed. May mga monumento na na itinayo para sa mga biktima, mga tinorture at nawala nung panahon ng martial law. May mga libro na rin na mga inilithala at mga litrato na nagpapatunay ng kanilang kananasan. Meron din na mga court records, record ng mga korte na nagsasabi na nangyari ang ilang mga kalanasan ng martial law. But wait, there's more. Hawa ko ngayon ang kopya ng Republic Act No. 10368, an act providing for reparation and recognition of victims of human rights violations during the Marcos regime. This was signed in 2013 for the House it was Speaker Feliciano Belmonte Jr. And for the Senate, Senate President Juan Ponce Enrile. Dahil sa dami ng mga nag-react sa tete-tete na Bongbong Marcos at Juan Ponce Enrile, Malacanang na rin ang nagsabi. Anong agenda nitong dalawang ito, si dating Senator Bongbong at Senator Juan Ponce Enrile? Baluktotin ba ang kasaysayan, Secretary? Eh, mahirap po magbaluktot ang kasaysayan na meron na tayong desisyon ng Korte Suprema at meron na tayong batas na nagsasabi na lahat po ng kalapitan na nireklamo ng mga piktima ng martial law ay tunay na nangyari. So yung sinabi ni dating Senator Juan Ponce Enrile na walang inaresto at pinatay dahil sa kanilang kritisismo noong panahon ng martial law ay completely false. Ang sabi nga natin, Ang kasaysayang kinalimutan ay mauulit at mauulit lamang. That's the fact.